Oh, uh, I think we're probably running a speed test. There we go. You saw the gra everything glitching. But right now, we are really obsessed with Starlink and how to stream over Starlink. Um, What's Starlink? What is Starlink? Uh, so, it is an internet service provided by satellites in low Earth orbit. So, they're 342 miles up, which interestingly makes them 90 miles above the International Space Station. But that's still pretty low. So, they are whizzing by. Um, this is not the old fashioned satellite internet where there is one satellite in geosynchronous orbit sitting over the equator so you could point your dish at it. No, these satellites are whizzing by and through smart electronics, it looks like a dish, but it's actually, you know, a whole series of little MIMO antennas that are trying to tune in on the satellites as they zip by. Uh, more than 3,000 satellites up there. And yeah, this is a this is a SpaceX product, right? Elon Musk's company, one of his many companies. Uh, and it's interesting because it's sort of awesome and sort of not, right? It, 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 I mostly lean towards awesome, right? I mean, on a good day, you get more than 100 megabits. There's satellite overhead. They're not very busy. Um, but if there's no satellite overhead, you might get 50 or two megabits or lose signal for a minute uh, because you know, 3,000 satellites, but they're whiz whizzing by all over the earth. And, uh, and I mean, it's awesome in that like people on ships and stuff are getting internet for the first time. People on RVs are able to drive in the middle of the desert, you know, stop, turn this thing on and they're on the internet, 50 or 100 megabits, or even two megabits. You're in the middle of the desert, you're in the middle of the ocean. It's kind of awesome. Um, so that's super cool. Um, you but know, it but, can be flaky. But it can be flaky. And this is where we see, you know, all these Reddit forums where people are saying, what should I do? Because my Starlink is so unreliable. And people tell them, oh, you should use it with Speedify. Um, both Speedify is you know, smart error correction stuff can fix a lot of little glitches. And if you can combine it, even with a really slow internet. So a lot of people are saying, don't cancel your DSL when the Starlink comes. Use the DSL, even if it's just one megabit, plus the Starlink and Speedify. Now you're not going offline, even if there's no satellite overhead. Um, so this guy was really obsessed. The other thing that got us obsessed was, uh, was it UFD Tech? Those guys put a Starlink dish on the roof of their car and I think two tethered cell phones, three, three tethered cell phones and drove across the country. And in, you know, in some places the Starlink was the only working internet and in plenty of places it didn't work, but some of the cell phones worked. And so between them, they managed to basically drive all the way across the United States, streaming video, with just a couple little dropouts here and there, and, you know, in tunnels and mountains, and, you know, a few weird spots, but all in all, it was kind of amazing. It got us thinking, you know, how could we do this with Speedify? All right, so should we show what you did now? Mm -hmm. All right, so so Ryan then, I got him that gaming PC last night. Then he started installing software on it. There we go. Talk about what you did here, Ryan. So this is our, our live feed of the Starlink satellite dish. And uh, basically our setup is the Starlink itself. And then we have a power over ethernet camera on the roof that you saw. And the streaming software we're using on this new computer, which is an Asus ROG Strix uh, G10 CE. Um, the core of the stream is OBS. And we're using this plugin called the Advanced Scene Switcher to control switching through all the different layouts that we have. We're using another plugin called the OBS WebSocket 4.x Compat plugin. And that, that lets us open up a WebSocket that we can connect the uh, Streamlabs chatbot to. And so we're, we're using 
two different chatbots. We're using Stream Elements and Streamlabs chatbots so that uh, people can control OBS scenes with the chatbot as well as uh, get more info in the chat from the Stream Elements chatbot. And we're also using Stream Elements for alerts. And we have a Python script set up that's connected to the Speedify CLI so that we can run OBS hotkeys to switch scenes like this every time there's a change in the connections or the Starlink and Speedify performance. Yes, I actually wrote that thing. So that, that Speedify has a command line interface where you can, you know, write programs to talk to Speedify, you know, get back JSON objects. And I wrapped in Python, which you can find at the Speedify py py project uh, on GitHub. And so I, I wrote a little script that, you know, what it does is it's constantly asking Speedify what's going on. Is the Starlink working? Is Speedify connected? Things like that. And then based on it, it fakes key presses. Control Alt U, for instance, every time Speedify connects, sending that to OBS. And then OBS has that hotkeys feature. It's kind of neat if you haven't seen settings, hotkeys, and OBS. There's a list of basically every feature in the app and next to a little text box. And so if you choose one of the text box and do control alt U, then from then on, whenever OBS gets control alt U, it'll immediately add a feature. And so every scene you create is listed so you can switch between the scenes just by sending the right key presses. And so here we are. Um, so this, these graphs, we're getting them, we're using OBS's browser component and hitting, uh, Right, dishy.starlink.com yeah, yeah. slash statistics. As well as the Speedify browser in the... Right, and the Speedify is a browser as well. Turns out Speedify on Windows is actually a web page. <laughs> uh, it's a little more complicated on Mac OS, but uh, on Windows, if you know the right secret URL and uh, you, you can embed the whole UI in a browser. And all of that is going out to Restream Studio, which is how we're, we're going right. live right now. Yeah, so setting up OBS was very, very complicated. <laughs> you did an amazing job. I mean, this Thanks. look at this. It, it does a lot more than it looks like it's doing. Um, <laughs> the The hardest part was like figuring out how to get the, the chat to control scenes well. Um, we have we have a few commands set up now, and we're going to set up more. Um, if you if you type exclamation mark zoom into chat, it should zoom into the, All right. the camera. Why don't you do that? All right. Um, yep. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Good job, Quiet Galaxy. Try typing exclamation mark UFO. What was that? <laughs> Does Starlink work best in cities, suburbs, or rural areas? So one, I think, Star, I'm imagining Starlink works best in areas that Starlink says their service. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, let's give them that. Um, the most important thing is it wants a full view of the sky. Um, it wants to see, you know, everything north of it if you're from the Northern Hemisphere, everything south of it. Uh, these things operate at sort of 12 to 40 gigahertz. I mean, this, this is, these are really high frequencies. You know, Wi-Fi is at 2.4 or 5 gigahertz. Um, they announced that, you know, the next couple of years they're going to start using 6 gigahertz too, and people are worried about it how short range that it will be and whether or not it'll be mm -hmm. able to get through walls. So Starlink's up to 12 gigahertz at the bottom, all the way up to 40 gigahertz. These, these are frequencies that have trouble making it through a sheet of paper or a leaf. So, you know, a, a tree in the way will block the signal. Um, so you definitely want to get as much sky as you can, right? Up on a roof. You know, and so if, if you're out, 
If you're out in the country, I think there are probably spots where you can just, you know, set it on a table and see that much sky, right? Here, here in Philly, you have to make it to the roof and in some places. Even on, even on our office roof, this one still gets partially obstructed by like the stairwell entrance and all the other antennas that we have up there. How are you connecting two Ethernet connections? We're using one Ethernet built into the computer, and then I have a USB 3 gigabit Ethernet connection just in one of the USB ports. Anyway, USB 3 is fast enough, uh, 3.2 or something, uh, to handle gig speeds. And of course, this is just tens of megabits. Ah. Yeah, this computer, I, I just, you know. I went to Micro Center and said, you know, what's the best computer I can get for less than a thousand dollars? So I spent eight hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, seems like a decent machine. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when we post more tech talks, interviews, and tutorials.